Hey guys, what's going on? 5869 here with another replay analysis. This time we're looking at Fancy Bear's offlane pudge. Um, he put in a, a nice little request in my thread um, where he kind of breaks it down a little bit himself, thinks about what he does right, what he does wrong. He says, uh, good actual laning, smoke yanking, target priority, bad item build, um, time management, last hitting, and map awareness. He also thinks he's somewhere um, around, he's 1.7k right now. He thinks this game's around 1.7 to 2k. I would probably agree with that since um, unranked MMR tends to be uh, very wide, actually. It usually brings in a wide range of players compared to, to normal matchmaking or, or ranked matchmaking, I mean. Um, and right now, already probably a bad idea. You don't need to contest the, the rune. You're just an offlane hero. It's no big deal. All you're looking for in this lane is the EXP. So top lane looks like it's going pretty swell for your team. And we'll just start speeding it up. The item choices. Um, the item choices I'm actually, I'm actually fairly okay with. The boots are pretty good, mainly because he's going to be... There's no way this tinker is going to be bot lane. Like, I, like, actually no way. If this tinker is not mid... It's pretty game losing, so he knows Tinker's going to be mid. Doesn't really need a stout shield since uh, he can just stand back. Like these these melee heroes shouldn't be hitting him. All Pudge needs really is the EXP. He doesn't need the farm that much. You can get a lot done just with about level seven, level eight, even just level six stuff like that. So he can just stand pretty far back here. The boots are good. It means that they won't really be able to chase him down. You don't need to contest last hits here, like. The thing is, is they, they do have good lockdown and good damage if they can get a hold of you. So if you get stunned up here by this Wraith King who, who actually grabbed uh, his lifesteal first, um, which is, is pretty bad, which is pretty bad for them, pretty good for you. Um, but if you get stunned up and then chains and then flame guard, like you'll probably die. So you don't need to worry about going that close up. Like you're actually getting so much out of this offlane that it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Like you're already level three, two minutes in and... They're trying to trade farm, so they're not really getting much. Again, still getting some good stuff here. You almost go down because you got a nice rune. And you're going to get stunned under tower. Still doing all right. Ember Spirit almost dying. And you're looking for the hook, which I don't blame you at all for. And you get stunned up. Run, 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 run. Um, and that was unfortunate. It looks like you just got slight of fit. Oh, no. So you took him under tower. Okay, so you got the kill there. That was actually pretty worth like, that was actually pretty worth, um, he does get a lot more gold there, actually, but you get a, a kill on a core, you're an offline hero, you're level 4, um, which might actually make it not that worth, but it was still alright, it was still alright, I think that's okay, doing pretty well, you haven't used that clarity, you probably really won't need to, so the clarity you probably could have saved, and then, um, maybe bought a little bit more regen or, or something like that. Still going, not doing too bad. Looking for another hook. Gonna hook him under tower. That's huge, but they've got a lot of chasing. You couldn't kill him, which is super unfortunate. He's got a bracer, so he's super tanky. If you are gonna hook somebody early on, you should you should definitely try to, to look for the hook right under tower. Because there, the tower's not gonna hit him. You probably don't have enough damage since you've only got level 2 rot, level 3 hook. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. Like, early on, if you're playing offlane or even mid pudge, like, unless they're under tower... You're probably not going to have enough damage until about level 8. Maybe level 7, but but most likely around level 8. He almost dies, so you do go for it. But now it starts getting kind of bad because they're they're pretty far ahead. I do like this. The smoke TP, you're level 6, and that's what you should be doing. You could honestly just leave this lane and give it up and just go for the ganks. So you go smoke, and it looks like you're looking for the tinker, who is mid. In a very weird position right now. And there's so nice hook and nice kill. So that was nice. Gonna help secure the mid lane. And the, okay, so the mana boots, like I, I, I can't say I really care for. I want to see if you get this hook because I'm really excited to know. Oh my god, that was so freaking close. I don't know why that guy turned around, but whatever. Looks like you could go for another one. Mana boots are gonna help you out here as well. And here you go. I think he gave you a mango there as well. Eat them. Good. And you don't have another hook. You're going to suicide there, which is all right. Might have been able to get away. But mana boots, like, I'm, I'm not really too fond of on Pudge, honestly. Like, I, I don't think the mana pool is that big of an issue. I think getting a bottle 
is usually good enough since you're going to be roaming around anyways you can usually secure a rune um his mana pool is not that big that a bottle like doesn't make it useful and then you can save the extra 200 gold and start moving in towards something like a four staff which will boost your mana pool as well as give you the ever so necessary uh, positioning tool that you need as a pudge and I do notice that this game um, you don't get a positioning tool like blink like four staff and, and that's stuff super important so another nice smoke gank looks like you're going for mid again you're level seven so you've got the level four hook here and that's very important and just barely missing that one that's unfortunate you got to be aware of uh, when the creep lane is gonna start moving so you go for the hook there's only the one creep there and and that's why it does miss pretty much so they, they kill the creep and then they move back or they start moving forward so you got to be aware of something like that be aware of the surroundings when you're playing the pudge watch for the hooks and stuff like that but usually after you miss one hook i tend to think that it's not as good to stay um because he's most likely going to be playing a little bit safer you're waiting for this top lane to push in i i don't mind this whatsoever um, there's the fissure which is gonna stop it a little bit you're still waiting around here and you're gonna have to leave so you probably could have just gone for that if the undying was there the whole time which I'm pretty sure he was yeah like you probably could have just gone under tower there you just throw it on the tombstone and just dive like you've got a, a PL and undying in yourself you can easily get a couple kills out of that I it's like 2k so nobody's gonna TP in gonna get a nice pick there and you go for bottle anyways so if you're gonna go for a bottle you certainly certainly do not need the boots or the mana boots here you also buy a mango I think that's a little bit unnecessary you don't need any more regen so uh, you know the mango is just overkill by this point in terms of mana so yeah you got the bottle we'll kind of watch like if you ever really have would have a mana problem but but you really won't like you kind of do here but it's it's more of a fight here than it is ganking um, which that was a bit unfortunate. We'll try to go over this again here and, and kind of watch how this fight went. So, you're TPing in. You've got full mana. You missed the hook. You probably should have just ate him right away and he probably would have died. Um, you don't really need to go for the hook. It's not always necessary to lead with the hook. You can just lead with the, uh, the ult from the pudge. You go for the hook there. You actually hit your undying uh, again. So, if you had something, like, you probably would have been pretty close to getting a four staff at this point you probably would have had a four staff which if you could have four staffed around the trees and gotten a hook here you're gonna go down to this rocket so bottle up probably should have made sure you bottled up there you gave a dominating to the tinker which is really unfortunate and this guy's gonna go down to the ember spirit so some odd feet in there nice kill there and we'll keep an eye on you here so you're gonna tp in getting uh, some magic resistance for yourself you're actually gonna tp bottom and Okay, so your last hitting. And you're you're not really doing a lot there. So you TP bot, but you don't pressure the map really whatsoever. And I know it's only like 1.7k. So the other team's probably not thinking of this. But anytime you're off the map, they have to play so safe. Like, they're, I don't know if anybody's actually looking at the map at, at, a, at an MMR like this, not to be rude. Um, but if they are and they don't see you on the map, they have to play so safe. If they see you pushing bottom, that is like the best thing. If I ever see a Pudge, uh, a Slark, a Storm Spirit in lane or something, I just feel so good about myself because I know I, I can play a little bit scary or a little bit greedier. I can go out in lane and get the last hits that normally maybe I wouldn't if I don't see the Pudge. So just keep that in mind. Even if even if they don't look at the map, just last hitting in general isn't that great as a Pudge. Like You really don't need the farm that much. You should be getting the farm uh, with the kills. So you're finally going to rotate top. They do scout you out. You get hit by a rocket. Uh, looks like they're still there. You're still looking for a hook or something. Um, still going, still going. And they go another miss hook. Not much to say about that. Blah, 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 blah. Shit happens. Still looking for a fight. You're missing some HP here. And so you're going for the, I think you go for a pipe next. Um, you're fine with the cloak, honestly. Like, they don't have that much magic damage. The Tinker is the only one, really, with the magic damage. Maybe the Ember Spirit. But you're you're going to be innately getting magic damage every kill anyways. So you've already got 40% resistance. You you honestly don't need more. You really don't. You What you really need is a positioning tool. And that's a, that's a pretty big thing uh, in terms of, you know, landing that hook, force staffing in, and, and, you know, just getting dismember on somebody. Um... 
Uh, it's annoying to play Pudge with an Undying on your team or against you just because there's zombies all the time everywhere. Like, you, if you have a four staff here, you just four staff and eat them. Like, that's all you got to do. Can you uh, walk up and, and get a nice little flesh sheep there? If you had a four staff, you probably could have caught that guy. You do anyways because he stops moving, but you end up dying most likely to the Juggernaut alt. Yeah, so you just have to be careful when you're, you're jumping on somebody like Juggernaut that if you can't kill him instantly, he's just going to ult you. Like, 100%, he's just going to ult you. Um... What? I gotta watch that again. That was so confusing. Oh, he was spinning there. Okay. It just didn't show it earlier. Okay, so yeah, you, you just have to be careful. You have to... You If you don't kill him, he's gonna jump on you. Or, you know, somebody like an Ember Spirit. Something like that. Either they're gonna kill you or they're gonna get away, right? So you just gotta make sure that you've got enough damage there. You're gonna get a nice hook there. Um, I'm not really seeing too many issues here whatsoever it looks like you're not really too sure what you should be buying you want a four staff but you look like you also want an s and y it seems or no wait is this you no that's the, the sniper's items that's what the sniper wants to buy okay so now it looks like you're going for an agonims uh honestly i don't think eggs is that good on pudge it's fairly strong if you're really really far ahead which like you're six and five you got nine flesh sheeps that's not too bad but uh, I think you need to be pretty far ahead in order to, to really make it work out for you. So, uh, again, a positioning tool would, would really uh, work for you here. Um, just being off the map, again, you're not showing behind the sniper, which is really good. Waiting for somebody to gank him. Looking for the hook. This isn't the best position for a hook. You should probably be somewhere, um, like, either in these trees or in these trees. Because you, you, you're not going to get a hook from, from behind him, right? So, you're going to look for a hook from the side here. And that's going to be the one that nets you the kill. Standing behind him, if you have like a blink or a four staff, sure. But since you don't, uh, obviously it's not going to be that effective here. A weird echo slam for the ancients, I think. I have no idea what that was. So there you go. That guy's getting the rune. You should honestly be looking for a hook here. There's a sniper behind you. You'll probably be able to blow up whoever you grab. Um, Juggernaut could honestly die there. Um, looks like you're, you know... It's, it happens a lot at this MMR where you guys will just stare off at each other in the same lane for a while. Uh, meanwhile, their Ember Spirit is pressuring one lane, and that's kind of unfortunate. So, you did smoke up a couple times. You stopped. I don't think they're out of stock, because uh, I think you only bought two, right? No, so they're not out of stock, which means that you, you should grab one. You should be smoked across the river, and, and that should be enough for you. Just stay out of their vision sight. You, you're not doing too much standing around mid. Um, showing in lane again. They know where you are. You're going to you know secure a couple kills there. That's good. Mainly because he's bad. And... Uh, okay. So you see the Ember Spirit. Oh, no. You don't see the Ember Spirit in lane. Okay. Um, not really much to, to say about this. Because you don't really see anybody um, on the map. Yeah, you don't really see anybody here. You just kind of walk in, unfortunately. Wow, this guy managed to get a lot of farm by 27 minutes, considering it's 1.7k. So, just walk into a kill there, unfortunately. We'll just watch your player perspective. Don't be afraid. I, I don't know if maybe the replay is messing up, but don't be afraid to, to click on enemy heroes and, and see their items. You know, Be aware of what they're building, just so you know what you're up against. I know it's it's a lower MMR, but something like that will, will go a long way. You know, if you see somebody's got a mech, or if you see somebody's got a blank, or like right now you can't kill this Skeleton King, um, even though your team's here, I don't think it's really that great of an idea. It's not really a strong target to grab. Looks like you guys are going to go for him. You save your ulti until he's alive again, which is pretty huge. And there you go. So you get the Skeleton King. Not that bad. He was pretty rich, so you guys get a lot from it. Um, there's a lot of farm bottom. No pressuring, really. If only you could get that Tinker. So a Blink? Like, a Blink this game would have wrecked that Tinker. Like, you just Blink in, dismember, and wait for the hook. He's probably going to try to dodge it. You just wait till right after I go for the hook, because I believe in you. I know you can hit the hook. You go for a nice try there. I'll actually show you how close you were in case you weren't aware, um, because I am interested in that as well. And, okay, so not that close, but... Uh, wait, where did that go? I went too fast again. My bad. Here we go, throwing the hook, yeah, you know, pretty close, pretty close. I can see where you're coming from. 
he throws it kind of far back, so it's it's a little bit you know hard to tell. But you go for it, you miss 100% of the hooks you don't throw, right? So we'll just keep on going here. Go back to uh, player perspective, move over to yourself, and you're still going for the agonum scepter, but really the eggs isn't going to uh, give you all that much. Again, a positioning tool to deal with this tinker would have been pretty huge, or with anybody really. A positioning tool to help you get closer to somebody is is, is pretty strong here. Um, going for the agonum scepter still. The stats aren't that great as well for how much agonums cost. Uh, looks like this guy's dying top lane. Diffusal blade's pretty good against Skeleton King, I hear. Wraith Band gets dropped, yada yada yada. Looking for the hook again. Um, so after, it seems after about the 20 minute mark, like you're, you're kind of lost as, as what to do. Um, and I don't blame you because this team is just kind of all over the place. They're, they're places they shouldn't be, they're places that they they should be, stuff like that, you know. Um, but there's nothing wrong with buying a smoke, invading their jungle, trying to find somebody there. If you have a positioning tool, again, you can buy the smoke, go in their jungle, four staff, dismember, blink, dismember, something like that, and then grab a, a hook after that. Um, again, you guys are kind of playing super defensive right now. Looking uh, around the map a little bit more. You're in their jungle now, but that's kind of where you leave it at. You shouldn't really be showing in lane, because now if anybody's like bought in their jungle, they're probably like, oh my god, there's a punch there. I have to get out, or they're going to gank you. Uh, either way, just a, a, a lot of wasted time recently just like hitting creeps, which isn't that effective. Like you've got an eggs now, but it's not going to award you that much. You look for the hook. Oh my god, that's so close. So again, still nothing. Grabbing some TPs. Yada, yada, yada. Still going, still going. Um, should be should be generally looking for kills a little bit more. You, you have an invis rune? Like, that's pretty huge. I would just use that invis rune. And like wait for the tinker, like use it a little bit early. If you wait like a little bit longer, wait for the tinker here. Hopefully you don't show. Looks like somebody's coming up the river. This guy missed the hook, unfortunately. So that was kind of close. I would have saved it for the tinker since you would have killed them most likely. But yeah, that just shows like how little Agnum Scepter does. Almost dying there, running away, blah, 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 healing up. And again, you're going for the pipe. You don't need it. You need more physical damage. Honestly, I think Shiva's would be really solid this game. Um... One, they have like three melee cores, maybe two and a half because Ember Spear is just going to slay a fist anyways, but Shiva's would be really good against the Jug, against the um, the Wraith King, uh, you know, somewhat against the Ember Spirit there. So keep in mind that Shiva's would be good. It's some nice burst damage as well. It's like 200 damage. If you had a 4 staff there, that guy would probably be dead. If you had a 4 staff or Blink. Um, so again, just... Like, positioning tools are so important on a hero like Pudge, Invoker. Um, somebody that requires a skill shot or, you know, an important spell to hit. A nice swap to maybe keep you alive here. Um, again, think about having a force staff there. You would have gotten out. Or a blink dagger, you probably would have gotten out as well. I think there's a few seconds, quite a few seconds, actually, that they didn't hit you. And now the game's just kind of going downhill. Um, it's not really your fault in general. Like, everybody's kind of dying uh, all over the place, but... If you have positioning tools, you probably land uh, a few more kills. Net a few more kills, I mean. Land some more hooks. Um, help your team pressure the map a lot more. And, uh, you know, just, just generally uh, a little bit, you know, better as Pudge. So we're still going. Um, again, they have no magic damage, so you kind of have to look at the team when you're going to buy an item. Like, I know it probably says as Pudge uh, to buy whatever. Uh, yeah, it says to buy a Hood of Defiance, whatever, but realistically like you don't need a hood whatsoever it's good for your own rot i understand that it does help you against the rot but like you're already 53 percent magic resistance like hood in my opinion is is fairly counterproductive as pudge unless they've got a lot of excuse me a lot of magic damage which they really don't have that much um they've got the tinker which is about it who is unstoppable yeah he's getting a dig on but Realistically, the Dangon's not going to do that much against you. I think a Shiva's to help deal with the physical damage um, is probably your best bet, like, realistically. Um, I'm trying to think, like, what else might be good, but... I think Shiva's is probably your best item. If you've got, like... Um, if you go, like, Brown Boots, Force Staff... Brown Boots, Bottle, Force Staff... Um, and then either Blink or Boots of Travel, depending on how the game's going. I think Boots of Travel is probably a better uh, option, just because you can just kind of follow this Tinker around the map. You kind of have to, to be the Tinker, you know? Put your mind in that of the Tinkers and say, okay, he's going to be at this Creep Wave next. I'll Boots of Travel to the one right before it. Wait for him to go, because at 1.7k, this guy, 
He's got a blink, but I don't think he's even using it. Like, if we watch him here, he might be now, but he, he certainly wasn't before. He was just with the wave. So he's going to TP in. And is he going to blink? No. So he's not even blinking out. Like, if you're if you're just a bit over here and you force staff in and eat him, you have a good chance of killing him. Like, you honestly do. It's not like uh, he's going to, you know, blink out after that. Like, he can't blink out. He's got no escape. And, like, now he's got a fairly high level Dagon because, you know, you guys let him get to it. But if you're there earlier and you're pressuring him a lot earlier with the force stuff and stuff, he's got to think a lot more of, of where he is. Uh, he blinked out to TP out, which isn't what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to TP in, blink to the trees, march, and then do whatever. We'll watch if he does it this time. And again, no, he's really not. He's just, like, trying to farm up as much as he can. You're going to blink forward again. If you're there, he's dead 200%. So think of something like that um, when you're playing a game. Look at the enemy heroes. Think about what you should be building, what they're strong at, what they're not strong at. You get a nice little catch there on him. The Tinker looks like he's trying to TP in. You're going to get a nice little uh, dismember and, and kill him, which is great. You guys are looking for Roche. Uh, now you got to be careful, though, because there's like nine heroes here. And I can't believe that Juggernaut's ulti just completely jumped on Roshan the whole time. That was actually so unlucky right now. The sniper is super dead. You get to deny, but it doesn't matter because realistically, uh, they've got more cores that are more farmed than yours. And, and, you know, at around 1.7k, that's all it really takes to win is just more cores. So they're continuing to go. And at this point, like, your your impact really isn't that great. Like, you're going for a pipe. You're not helping out the team that much anymore. Like, early on, you created a lot of space. You ganked the tanker a couple times. You slowed him down, which was huge. You found some nice hooks around the map. Top lane, whatever, yada, yada. Um, so, it, it's been a pretty good game, honestly. Like, it's been a pretty good game for you early on, up until about 20-ish minutes, maybe 25 minutes. And then after that, you, your item decisions kind of started to fall off. You know, you went for the eggs, which hasn't really done too much for you. Um, so, you know, it's it's not that great. Um, yeah, like, the, the damage really isn't that great that you get from eggs, actually. So, um, especially because if you get stunned or something, like, eggs is useless, right? So... If, if you get locked down or anything, like, eggs pretty much only helps your dismember, right? Whereas four staff helps everything. It helps your hook. It helps your dismember. It helps your escape, your initiation, right? So it, a four staff and a blink give you a lot more than just an aghanim scepter because an aghanim scepter is only buffing one ability. The four staff and the blink do a lot more for you. So you have to kind of point out what items can really help stretch your play. And uh, an aghanim is, is not one of them. So keep that in mind here. You did a good job early on with the smoke ganks and stuff like that. I do like that. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure why you stopped. Maybe you just stopped thinking about it. But smoke ganks are, are always strong, right? Like, uh, you don't want to smoke gank at night because smoke breaks at, like, 1,025 units or something. And your nighttime vision as Pudge is a little bit less than that. I think as Pudge, it's, like, 900 and something. I could be wrong. Uh, I know average is, like, 800 and something, 825. And Pudge has more. So I think his nighttime vision is, like, 900 maybe, something like that. If you, if you smoke gank during the day, the smoke's going to break at about 1,000 units, but you've got about 1,300 units of vision. So keep that in mind as well if you're going to smoke gank. That dude totally screwed up his Echo Slam. And in this team fight, you did absolutely nothing, which is really unfortunate. You guys are standing in March and eating it, but it doesn't matter. You're still doing what needs to be done. If you had Dismember, that guy probably would have died. You didn't really need to use it back there. Um, so you didn't have a huge impact on that fight, mostly because... We'll take a look at it again. So you're in the back. You're just kind of looking for a hook, I believe, here. So let's go. We'll, we'll slow it down right, right when they get in. So there's, like, a ton of creeps in front of you. There's a ton of illusions right now. And you're looking for a hook. So where are you going to hit a hook here? Like, there's actually no way you're hitting a hook. So you have to kind of get in the front and just start going in on somebody. That guy totally whiffed his Echo Slam. He probably thought that was the real PL, but if you if you just get in there and start dealing some damage, like that's good. Maybe you can hit uh, a hook from here to here on that Tinker. You're not really paying attention to him. You're looking at other stuff, but you're just walking around looking for hooks. And when it's a, a clustered team fight like that, you're never going to find it. So you finally walk in, and now is when you actually start helping out, start dealing damage here. You're going to get a nice dismember over there, but maybe not really necessary. Um... If you had a four staff, this guy's probably dead because you're a few units ahead and he just barely gets out. Like, just barely gets out. 
That's unfortunate. You go for the hook. If you went for the right click instead of the hook, he probably would have died. That's just a little decision-making thing, though, and uh, I, I do understand it. So you'll just get better at that as you play Dota more. Keep watching. Looks like you want to go for a heart next. Uh, I guess if you, if you are going to go eggs, you probably need a heart, and then it starts being useful because the strength damage or the bonus is pretty huge. If you have a four staff, you can just cross that, get a kill. Uh, the PL... Looks like he blinks out here. This guy should die. He is going to die. So a nice little hook there. The PL just really needs to get out. You need to get out as well. Like, there's no reason you guys should be here because they can all just rotate to this tower. And you're just going to die there. The PL is going to keep going, but he shouldn't be here still. He's probably going to end up dying. Yeah, so he died. So you guys didn't need to be there. Like, that was just super greedy. Um, your team was not there whatsoever. Um, like, the Undying and the Venge are actually so far away right now that there's no way... That they could have helped you. And there's no reason that the two of you need to be there. Like, really, there, there is. And there's a ton of farm bottom. Um, you know, you, you could be grabbing some farm in your jungle. So, just something like that. I, I'm not sure what happened in the comms. If you were saying get back and he didn't want to. And you felt the need to help him. Even though you shouldn't have. But, nevertheless, you guys didn't need to be there. It's not that big of a deal. We'll keep going. You go for a BKB. It, it, it's not going to do anything against this team, honestly. It's going to prevent a little bit from Tinker. Not going to prevent anything from the Jug. Not going to prevent anything from the uh, the Skeleton King other than maybe the stun. It's not going to prevent anything from the Ember Spirit other than, you know, maybe uh, a Chains or, or the Flame Guard, which really late game isn't that much. Like, you've got 18 Flesh Heaps now. 53% magic damage resistance still. So, you got a ton of magic damage resistance. I think that pipe actually really helped your team there. But um, you guys wouldn't have died anyways, like better shaker. I don't know what he was thinking. So you guys are going in, going in, and you're on like a huge comeback right now. It looks like you're gonna get racks here. No, he targeted down the wrong racks. That's unfortunate. You go BKB. You're asking if the jug's coming back. That's nice of you. So you're a manor player. I already like you. And uh, the BKB really doesn't do anything for you here. Um, in all honesty, like it, it actually does pretty well nothing. So that's uh, unfortunate. I know you said I didn't use the BKB much. You you weren't sure. Uh, really what the BKB did, and I totally understand. Because, again, yeah, you, you could tell. Like, BKB is really going to do nothing for you this game. So, that's something you had to recognize. That's, like, 4,000 gold, which could have been better spent towards, like, a 4 staff and 90% uh, of a blink dagger. Um, you guys get, like, massively echo slammed here. You're going to go dismember this guy, but it doesn't really matter that much. You guys are fighting under March, which absolutely sucks. This dude's going to go down and not have ulti because, like, Diffusal Blade's a pretty good item. That hook would have hit if that didn't go down. And the enemy team is GGing now. Unfortunately, that guy left. So, it looks like this is pretty well it. Just keep on going faster here, faster and faster. Not bad. Hit some nice hooks. All right. So, not too bad. Pretty good game. Uh, a few things to take away from it. Itemization is a huge thing. Um, that'll bring you like a, a long way. Um, smoke ganking, you could have done more. Like you kind of just stopped. You did it early on, which is huge. Like nobody does that. Like in even like upwards of 4K, people don't do that, which blows my mind. But nobody smoke ganks, and it's actually so good. So you you could have kept smoke ganking. Um, the itemization again, yeah, was was kind of iffy. You kind of have to realize what you should be doing. Um, you showed yourself on the map a couple times, which maybe at this MMR isn't that big of a deal, but uh, just understanding how important that is, like even if it's not a big deal, but hearing me say it now, showing yourself on the map as a ganking hero is is not game losing, but pretty bad because it, it, think about it, when you're playing against a Pudge, when you don't see the Pudge, like how nervous are you to move up in your lane? He could be in the jungle, he could be like at home bottling up, buying a smoke, you have no idea, so you have to play so safe uh, and and in a much less greedy style than you would if he's showing. So he, he once he shows, I'm just like, man, this is great. I can last at every creep. Like I feel so good about my life right now. The Pudge is is farming, even though you know he doesn't really need items that much. So uh, just something like that. Think about trying to stay off the map a little bit more, um, but also be aware of your time usage. So there was a couple times that you you kind of uh, you know sat for a hook, which isn't that bad, honestly. As as a Pudge, like it's kind of hard to to say whether or not you're wasting time because you, you're sitting around and you're like, oh, am I wasting time? Should I wait longer for this hook? Uh, if I get the kill, it's totally worth it. If not, that sucks. Usually after one hook, people become more aware. And if they don't see you like hook another lane, they probably play a lot safer. So uh, you did miss a couple hooks mid and then you went top and, and that was kind of the logical place to go. So I don't know if they were ready for it, but you guys probably could have dove the tower there. 
that was a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but you did play well. You did play really well. So props to you for just buying those smokes early on. The animization wasn't like game losing by any means. Um, but it, it, of course, it definitely could have been better, right? So just keep in mind that, that a hero like Pudge really needs uh, a positioning tool like Force Staff or Blink Dagger. And uh, that will really take you a long way in, in terms of hitting more hooks, uh, you know, blinking or Force Staffing on somebody like a Tinker and, and getting a Dismember right away. So just something like that to keep in mind, and, and you'll get a lot better as you go on. So thanks for sending in the game. Hopefully you got a little bit uh, out of this, and, uh, you know, you, you'll get a little bit better here. You're at, you're at like, 1.72K. Honestly, the, the more you play just generally, you'll get better at last hitting, at, at game mechanics, map awareness, rotations, being off the map, things like that. Obviously, there's a, a lot more that could have been done that's better, uh, but usually a lot of minute things and, and a lot of uh, uh, important things I, I don't tend to, to get into and unless I'm doing like a, a 4K or above replay analysis because I, I don't think it's important to fill your head with that thing or like uh, any of the, those tips when you're at like 2K because really all you need to work on is just general item builds, um, as an offlaner, like you, you really only need XP. As an offlane pudge, you really only need XP. You just need to hit about six, seven, eight, uh, and and you'll really start getting those kills. That's really all you need. Uh, for there, you need like two thousand gold for a four staff. Like if you have like brown boots, bottle four staff, you're already uh, pretty good in terms of being able to pressure the map. So just keep that in mind. A couple early hooks netted them a couple kills. And uh, since you were a heart, uh, you were ahead uh, exp wise. They probably got a lot from that. So something like that is is kind of unfortunate. Uh, that hook under tower on the wraith king almost netted the kill. But uh, uh, especially if you're like ember spirit, who can follow up pretty easily with like uh, searing chains, flame guard, like sleight of fist to get him in there. Just keep in mind when you're you're getting aggressive like that. So uh, it was a good game. Thanks again. Uh, thanks for taking the time. You know you 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 replied in the thread and you you kind of wrote it out nicely. You you already knew what, what you thought was good and bad. Your actual laning that was uh, was good, aside from, uh, you know, that, that one random, or not random, but the, that one or two hook that, that you tried to go for that ended up, you know, getting them a kill. Um, your smoke ganking was, um, it was it was all right. It was, it was pretty good for your skill level. Um, it could have been better because you kind of stopped later on. So, you know, keep smoke ganking. It's, it's not like it, it gets worse as time goes on. Your item build uh, was bad. Your time management was pretty good. Your last hitting, you're a pudge, so you don't need to last it that much. Your last hitting is actually pretty good. Your map awareness seemed pretty good um, for your skill level. You could have been, really, you should have been looking around a little bit more. Like, as an offlaner, uh, it's pretty relaxing. You don't have to focus your, on your lane that much. You have to stand just in the EXP range, and then you can jump around to the other lanes and, and just be aware, you know, check their items, check what they're building, check their timings. If, if you're keeping an eye on Tinker um, and you're seeing what he's building, like if he goes like Soul Ring Bottle, something like that, you you can probably say to yourself, okay, now he's going to be moving into his boots of travel. Any gank after this point is going to seriously put him behind, so maybe I should pressure him more. Just stuff like that. So a good game. Uh, everything you said was pretty on point, and I, I'm glad you sent it in and you put some thought into actually posting. So thanks again for sending it in, uh, Fancy Bear. I, I did enjoy it. Hopefully you'll have another replay to send in later on, but hopefully you watch this, you take something away from it, and I, I didn't mean to come down on you. Hopefully I wasn't you know, being too harsh on you. We're all here to learn and get better at Dota, because that's the end goal, right? Just getting better at Dota. So thanks again, guys, and uh, look to my next replay as well. I'll be doing quite a few today, just like the other day, and I'll be putting them up in a, in a nice big mega thread over on Learn Dota 2. So thanks again, and uh, hopefully you guys keep watching. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to check out some of my other videos. I have my series from Lane to Lane, where I just cast some everyday pubs that you guys send me. I also do some more professional pubs like uh, games from Koikva, Miracle, whoever I can get my hands on from Dota Buff. I have a learning series as well, so feel free to check that out. There's some more info in the description as well as some videos linked in the annotations at the end here. Thanks a lot.